so much within me that I want to do. And then I don't know where the thought came from. And he said, if I give you two billion or ten billion, <laughs> will you be okay? I said, no, I'll not be okay. Of course. But give me your power. If I have your power, the ten billion, two billion, all those things will come. Uh-huh. At least I will know my God because he has given me the power. Uh-huh. And then when money comes, I can enjoy it alone by knowing my God. Uh-huh. But if I have my pockets full of money, and still I don't know my God. I'm confused. What is wealth when you are a confused rich man? <laughs> so I said, God, let me know you and your power. 
And if money comes, fine. But at least I want to die knowing you. I don't want to die having questions on my mind. I don't want to die having uh, uh, all these clouds. You know, it's not clear. I want the atmosphere to be clear. And I know that, wow, this is who God is. I knew him and I died. Amen? So money is not my chase. The thing that I want to get is God. Sometimes money comes in the way. The money is needed. Money is useful. Money is needed. It's a necessity that will carry you to accomplish some of the dreams that you are fighting for. There are certain things you want to do. Sometimes your best days are being wasted spending time with the devil. The best days. I've seen that happen so many times. The best days when God has anointed you. The good days that God has poured his oil upon you. That is the day that the enemy has captured us and we are sitting down and we are complaining against God, fighting against God, disappointed in God, arguing to God and saying, God, why, why, why? Don't let the enemy get the best of me. When your anointing comes, let me spend time with you. Let me cherish you. May I not complain about the things you are doing in my life that I don't understand. May the enemy not have access into my life to come to me and to say that if God be God, how come you are going through this and how come you are going through that? If God so loves you, how come things have been like that? May the enemy not get the best of me. Amen. I want us to pray this prayer. That the voices of the enemy will not come at us to cause us and to turn us against God. That is why he brings those questions on our mind. So that you will turn against God. Because he has already turned against God. And now, knowing that God loves you, he wants you to turn against God. We are asking for forgiveness. Lord, we are sorry for allowing the enemy to use us as an instrument to really, to really bring pain to your house. Today we are repenting from complaining. We are repenting. We repent from arguing. We repent from murmuring. We repent for turning our back on you. We repent that we don't understand you. But how big are we? I mean, how big is our brain to even, to, to even comprehend you? We are more than what we can say. We are more than what we can offer. We are, we are more than what we can comprehend. So, Lord, we pray that, Lord, in our little understanding we have, you lead us and guide us. You lead us. You lead us and guide us. Lead us and guide us. We ask that you wash our hearts, wash our minds, and block the airwaves we sit and use to bring complaints. Block the airwaves, block the frequency that Satan communicates with us to bring discord between us and you. Block it, Lord. Block it, Lord. Block it, Lord. Block it, Lord. The Lord from henceforth, the enemy will not use us as instruments to fight against you. He will not use us as instruments to destroy the wonderful relationship that we have. The enemy will not use us as instruments to cause us to lose a blessing that you have already placed in our hands. The Lord is saying, there's something that you have in your palm. You don't know of it. And the enemy wants us to get into some sin. He wants to push us to do something against God. And so that the enemy can snatch and pull that thing out of our hands. And then when God told me this, I saw it spiritually that we were asking God, oh God, what do I have? I don't have anything. But God is saying that you cannot see it, but the enemy sees it. You have a gift. There's something in your hand. There's something in your hand. And the enemy wants you to give it up. The enemy wants you to destroy it. You don't see it, but he sees it. The longer you hold on to it, the longer, the more it will become real. But God is saying, tell my people not to let go of the gift in their hands. Even though that you are not seeing it, hold on to it. Hold on to loving him. Hold on to cherishing him. Hold on to righteousness. Hold on to the little things you are doing. Hold on to your prayer. Hold on to your worship. Hold on to your commitment and your faithfulness in serving God. 
All the things you are doing, he say, hold on and keep doing it. Don't give up. Don't say you have not seen any mountain move, so you are giving up. Don't say you have not seen the ocean being split up, so you are giving up. I say that this thing you have in your hand, it is valuable. It is valuable. He say the enemy hates what is in your hand. You might see yourself as a poor guy or a poor lady. But I say there's something more than wealth in your hand. There's something more than money is in your hand. There's something more than what you're looking for, which is in your hand. And he say, hold on to it. Don't let go. Don't let go. For I'm with you. Don't let go. Father, we pray. We worship you. We adore you. And we've already confessed our sins that we are free today. You, we don't hate you, Lord. You are not our enemy. We are not disappointed in you. We are not disappointed in you. We are not disappointed in you. But help us trust you. Help us trust you. Because you know the beginning from the end. And you know the end from the beginning. But we don't know. But one thing you said, that the plans you have for us, they are not evil, but they are good to give us an expected end. So help us to walk with you. Help us to cherish you. Help us to obey your word. Help us, Jesus. That you can bring us to the place where you want to see us. Bring us to that place where we encounter you. Bring us to that place. We thank you, Jesus. Child, take the child and throw it into the river now. But God being so good, before the midwives will get to the Hebrew women, the baby is already hanging. Crying. Mommy, I need food. So that means the baby is alive. May any enemy that has been sent to kill your dream, before they will get there, you are delivered. Amen. Before they will arrive, you are already holding the baby to your breast. And you are nursing the dream. Nursing the dream is that the dream has come through, doors are open, and now you are putting things in place. And whatever they, they plan to come and tell you to discourage you, maybe you are planning to open a shop. You told them one year ago. And you say, I'm planning to open a shop. But before they, so after some time, now they decided to come and visit you to ask you about, hey, what about that dream about opening that shop thing? Before they will get there, you've already ordered the goods. Amen. It will be too late now. Before they will get there, you've already signed a contract for the local. Before they will get there, so they will swallow their discouragement. That is the thing that the first prophecy that hit my spirit this morning for you. So may God work it faster than what the enemy is doing. And now, the mother of Moses thinking that she's just been a human being and she knew that this boy is a good boy and they will kill this boy one day decided to put this boy in a basket she invented God gave her wisdom to invent an ark when you're in trouble you don't know how good you can think when you're trusting God she invented something out of the situation, out of the pain, out of fear, out of all these things, she invented what we call today boats. Ark. She invented it and placed a child in it and asked it to sail with the safety of God. I pray that out of all the complications you are going through now, may God give you wisdom to invent something. Amen. Oh, yeah, it will not be in vain. May God give you wisdom to invent something. Amen. And God touched the sister, Miriam, to watch over. Moses is on the 
is on the river. But Miriam is at the banks of the river. May always God give you somebody to navigate you. So Miriam's job was that I am watching over my brother in case there is something that can cause him harm. But if, I'm, I'm, are you getting something here? You have a dream, you have done something, and the thing is moving. The mother is thinking that this baby will be saved. Even though they're placing the baby on the sea or the river, you know that it will end bad. Naturally, it will end bad. What are you expecting? That this baby will be in the, in the basket forever? You know the baby will die. But in what is something told her, this baby, this thing, this dream, it will not bring shame to you. Some of us here, we have dreams. And any time we want to take steps, you hear the word failure. What if you fail? So that thing has become a wall. And it's hindering you from taking a step. But then there's another voice in within you that says that you will not fail because I will watch over the dream. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm in there. I'm in there. That is where the amen should come. Because until you have faith and create, invent that new thing that nobody has seen before and put the dream in it. And then by God's mercy, you have a watchman, a watch lady watch, walking around the banks mm -hmm. to see that there will be no harm to what God has given you. Amen. And I believe it is God who gave the mother this idea that you, you release it. I know you cherish this baby of yours. Because the Bible said that. And when she saw that the child was good, she did that. So the mother realized that this baby is a good baby. I will not, them, I will not allow them to come and kill the baby. This is not my message. I have not touched my message yet. This one is all God. <laughs> when the mother realized that this baby is good, the Bible said, and then she puts the child in that basket and put the baby on the surface. And God made sure that the river was controlled by him, that the baby ended up at, in front of a woman who cannot give birth. See, the thing you will release eh, is to end in front of somebody and it will bring solution to somebody's crime. Amen. Jesus, today I want you to open your spirit because I, I say that it's a prophetic message. <laughs> when God is controlling me like that, then it's a prophetic message. You see, God caused the child to go to the place where Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's sister or Pharaoh's daughter was bathed. And when he came there, she said, the river has given me my prayer answer. <laughs> my God. Can you imagine? When she opened it, they said, ah, a baby, boy, I've been praying for a child. He said, the river has answered my prayer. Let somebody meet you and say, this is my prayer answer. Amen. The baby might be out of fear, hungry, desperate, the mother in the house, oh Jesus, I think this will be my message of the day. The mother in the house, worried, said, God, the child you gave me, I release the child. God says that you have not lost your child. The mother was in a prayer room, Moses' mother was in the prayer room, when Miriam came and said, Mommy, the child you release, now I'm bringing the child back with permission from Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So now, the thing that she released in secret, now Miriam is coming with her brother, and everybody can see that there is a permission given for this Hebrew child alone. All Hebrew children are killed, but because somebody acted in faith, when Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, he said, the Miriam went to him, the daughter and said, should I get the nursing mother for you? Somebody who can take care of this baby. I can see your schedule is very hectic, so I can get somebody for you who can take care of the baby so that you don't have to stress yourself. And she said, 
get me that person and I'll pay the person. Mm. Mm. You keep your child, you, you, you will care for your child. You release your child, you will be employed to take care of your own child. So now, they will see bags of bread, rice, everything is leaving Pharaoh's house and is coming to the Levite house. What is going on there? So now if there is a scatter or there is a problem going on in a city, all the military troops know that don't, don't, don't go to Moses' house. That house is under Pharaoh now. And the woman's needs is supplied. I don't know, but I think I'm speaking so prophetically. Something is leaving your hands, but it's coming back to you with an authority from God. Amen. It came with protection. So even though that the Hebrew children are supposed to be working and they are being beaten, Moses can go from his mother's house and boldly enter into the palace <coughs> and go and sit at Pharaoh's table and eat with Pharaoh. He chooses where to sleep. It, don't, don't mind the movies you've watched before. The movies you've watched before, it happens like Moses don't know the, the man died. No, 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 that's not, that's not scripture. The, Moses' mother took care of Moses. See, Moses matured, can handle himself. And then Pharaoh's daughter said, now come and stay. I have a room in the palace for you. I want you to go to the same school. All the, the, the princes and the princesses are going. You attend the same school. You eat the same food. You wear the same clothes. That's what they call him the prince of Egypt. A Hebrew guy became the prince of Egypt because the mother had faith. Where is your faith? If you can trust God and let go. Oh my God. It looks like I might not be able to touch my message today. <laughs> but here is the thing. When God sends you to a place in a certain time, He sends you to steady them. God knew that Moses would be dealing with Pharaoh. So I want you to know who Pharaoh is. So stay with Pharaoh. You didn't get that one. You, in the future, you will have to deal with Pharaoh. So I've given you favor to stay in Pharaoh's house so that you know how he talks, you know when he wakes up, you know what he do, everything. So when you, when you stand before him, you know how to talk. God has sent some of us for a steady. And we are studying some things because of where he's taking us. Now Moses went through all of that. I just have to give you the story and then we can continue. He went through all of that and then later on, he felt within him that he's born a deliverer. I told him on Friday that even though I am eating with the king and I'm acting like an Egyptian, the food they offer to the gods and they bring it to our table, we eat it together. I'm behaving all just like an Egyptian. I've been given rights and access to a lot of things that my fellow Hebrew brothers don't have. But I'm born to deliver my people. So within him, there's a call. And if he answers the call, he loses a lot of stuff. The calling within this young boy was to set the children of Israel free. And for him to set the children of Israel free, he has to become an enemy to what the Egyptians are doing to the Hebrews. So after suppressing his dream, one day he saw an Egyptian beating an Hebrew guy. And it was so painful. He doesn't, his hands, that's what we call reflex. Before he realized he has killed the Egyptian. It's the same people he was eating. See, when your time comes to fulfill your dream, you cannot control yourself. So you didn't get it. If you get it, you would have said amen then. Amen. The dream which God has for you, when the time comes, you cannot control it. Mm -hmm. So that means his time has come to deliver the children of Israel. So after finishing eating with the same Egyptian, he doesn't know what control him. He killed him. And hid the guy in the sun. And God was saying, son, your time has come to deliver these people. The next day, he saw the same people he has delivered. You see, God is controlling the guy. 
and he's driving the passion that is within him that it's time you are born to do this you are born to do this you are born to do this and you are suppressing it and God said no you have to do it you are suppressing it because he got to do it so when he keeps saying no God is setting him up the next day he saw the people fighting and he said why are you guys fighting amongst yourself and here this word I'm just giving you I'm summarizing what we did on Friday he came to separate the Hebrew guys who are fighting and one of them said, who has made you a leader of us? Do you know that where you have called and the people you have called to sometimes will speak against you? They know. And then I said, who has made you a leader of us? Are you also are you able to kill us like the way you killed the, the Egyptian yesterday? And Moses fled. He became afraid. And he ran for his life. But I pray that let no one speak for you to run from your calling. Amen. Amen. Or you're on your way to scout the market. You're about to go and register your company. And then you meet somebody on the road. The person starts telling you that Sweden is no good. Everything is bad here. What are you going to establish here? Oh God, forget it. Let's get money, go back to Africa. And go and do our own business there. And then you know hear words. That will cause you to give up on the dream. Amen. Before you realize, you will throw the, the papers you've already sealed and filled, then you're about to submit. The dream will die. But if you are still filled, you will continue with the thing. Now Moses fled, went for training, came back. God said, I'm going to deliver my people. Sometimes the people that you are sent to, to deliver them, the enemy used them against you. Get this one. The people that always fight against you, if you are in this country and you feel like Swedish people don't like you, they hate you, anytime you meet them, you're like, oh, these people can't stand them. You are saying to deliver them. You didn't get that one. That's how I used to feel. I said, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why I, don't, I can't stand these people. But revelation now, God is telling them, oh, it is the enemy that wants you to hate them. And as long as you hate them, you can see the necessity of delivering them. You even if I, God, open the door for you to see how you are going to do the things to help them, you will shut it down because it's about them and you hate them. A lot of people have come to this country, left this country, and they, they don't even want to hear the name of this country. Just like me when I was in Ghana, I don't want to hear the name of Sweden. When you mention it, I become angry. To the extent that when my Swedish passport expired, I left it for one year. I wouldn't go to the council. I don't know anything. My wife is there at the back there. She, she's my witness. I said, I don't care. I'm not going back there. I'm not going back to Sweden. So why should I even worry myself? I find something I'm doing. And then God touched me one day and said, your work is not done there. You have to go back. And when it's the will of God, God started taking Ghana. Because I was enjoying my country. And then all of a sudden, the, the joy and everything I was doing, now God pulled it out of me and said, now you have to go and finish that, that before you get. That what you have done here now, I've just given you a taste of what I'll give you in the future. So you just go and finish whatever you have to do in Sweden and then I'll give you access. And that's where my, my, my wife found, uh, I think my driving license that had like one week left to expire. Because they said, if I can have, have any ID card that is still valid, they can change my passport for me. And then she went through my old wallet and she found my driving license that was left one week. And then she photocopied, sent it to the embassy. And then they said, come and take picture for your new passport. Because that time God is telling me, go back. I say, oh God, oh man, I can't, man, God, I can't deal with those people out there. I'm tired of Swedish people. I like the way I've been in Ghana, it's cool. Everybody's around me. I have a lot of people. We came to the embassy in Abuja. We are standing there. They, they asked me my name. I don't know my name. <laughs> How long have you stayed in Sweden? I don't know. I was just standing there. The woman was looking at me. What is wrong with you? 
And my wife is like taking pen and paper, trying to fix everything. I mean, I'm confused. Am I really going back to that country again? She looked at me, she looked at me. She knew I have to come. God touched her. Like, Listen, whether he can spell his name or not, put him on the flight. Give him his passport. <laughs> and then when God sent you, God makes provision for you. So right there, he says, stand there. Let me take a picture of you. Start so stood there. Took the picture. Took the picture of my children. And everybody got Swedish passport before coming here. Children that were not born here. They go because when your mission is a certain place, there's grace for you to go. I was still sad, even though they are giving me my passport. They are giving these children who are born in Ghana Swedish passport. Still, I was confused and sad. It's mommy now who is driving me to the airport and was kidnapped. May God give you somebody who can kidnap you Amen. and to bring you into the dream. Amen. I was kidnapped to come in here. What people tell me about, oh, they struggle when you want, they want their children to come. It's a struggle. It's a... I never saw that. I just went with the kids. The children got their pictures taken. The next thing we see uh, in our mailbox, passports. Not Ghana passports. Some red, red passports. Hallelujah. So what is this one? May God do it for you. Amen. Because of where he's sending you, may God do it for you. Amen. So, now, Moses have met Pharaoh, talked to Pharaoh that God wants my people to come and serve him. Now, Pharaoh here stands for the spirit that doesn't want you to come to church. He's a spirit that doesn't want you to serve God. Pharaoh says, I will not let you and your people go and serve God. That's what it is. He's blocking them. So, God started fighting Pharaoh. All the children, firstborn children in Israel was now dead. And Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron that I know I have hindered you for so many years. 430 years were they, were they in captivity. So they saw, let me tell you something. They saw their great-grandfathers Pray that God deliver us from this place. We are being tormented. We are being beaten. We are tired. The prayer was not answered. Another generation, another hundred years, prayer was not answered. Another hundred years, prayer was not answered. Another hundred years, four hundred years, four hundred and thirty years. Now the prayer was answered. Now why? Because now God has found one man. I told him on Friday that any time God wants to do something, he needs a man or a woman. When God finds a man, he said, oh, I find me Moses. I can now deliver the people. The promise God gave Abraham was that your children will go into captivity 400 years. If you've read it before. He said 400 years, exactly 400 years. But then in 400 years, God couldn't do nothing on the 400 years because there was no man. So additional 30 years was added to it. Ah, here, here I'm messing up your theology. If you don't set yourself up for where God is taking you, the thing will delay. You can't blame God. The thing delayed 30 extra years. Now, the children of Israel, the dream of God is that they will leave Egypt and go to the promised land. The journey was supposed to be how many days? 11 days. That was God's plan. Out of disobedience and rebellion, it took what? How many years? 40 years. Thank you. Whose fault is that? Disobedience. Not being prepared. So God got angry one day. Do you know how Satan works? Satan set the children of Israel, he set them up. He said, you know what? I will let you go around the mountain for 40 years. You've left Egypt, but I'll let you go around the mountain. You would think for you, you would think you are going somewhere, but you are not going anywhere. You are repeating the same thing. 
So that's what the children of Israel, they think they are, they are making effort to go to the promised land. But they didn't know that they are just walking around the mountain. Around the mountain. Around, and God got angry and God said, stop going around the mountain. Can't you see you're wasting years? May God come into our life and tell us to stop. Because the same thing is repeating itself. Repeat who? The same thing is repeating itself. So God has to come there and say, Moses, you and this your guys, eh? you are wasting time. My original plan was that the journey was supposed to be 11 days. Now you have spent 40 years already. Wasted years. And I pray that let this thing not be anybody's portion today. May you not waste any more years. Amen. But may God lead you onto the shortcut. Amen. Now, what brought me to all this is that now they have come before the sea. They've come before the sea. And Pharaoh is still coming after them. I spoke about you are not going to be delayed. On Friday, I told them, after Pharaoh has released them, he came back to his senses. And he said, I'm going to fight them. I'm going to go after them and kill them. Sometimes you go for deliverance. God delivers you. The spirit stop hunting you. Those nightmares stops. The demon stops harassing you. And then it doesn't take too many days that you realize that some things are coming back. That was what we read on Friday. Now Pharaoh decided to come back and to come and kill them. Now verse 11, let's read. Because I've given you a lot of stories now. So we have a brief of what is happening. 11. And they said unto Moses, because there were not there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt this with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? So the people that the Mo Moses has been sent to to deliver them, the same people are now complaining that was it is it because there were no graves in Egypt? Do you know how God can deliver us and sometimes we want to go back? How God delivers us and then sometimes we want to go back to our own ways. Now the same people are now saying, because they see the Red Sea before them, and they see Pharaoh and his chariots right behind them, coming after them, then we start cursing God. Yeah, let's move on, verse 12. I pray that you will not go back. This is the complaining that God don't like. Sometimes God is answering our prayer. And we are still complaining. Because the way we design the prayer to be answered, that is not the way God wants to come through. You pray that God deliver me like this. And then God says, okay, I'll do it. But I'll do it my way. And then God decides to do it in a way that doesn't seem right to you. And then we start complaining. Is it because we're not graves enough in Egypt? That is why you are you have led us into the wilderness so that we'll be killed here. I pray that may the Lord have mercy that, that we will not complain against him. Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness because now they are seeing Pharaoh coming. Any demon that is coming after you, that is scaring you, that you, you, it has made you lose confidence and now you want to give up, I pray that God will help you. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not and stand still. Tell somebody, stand still. Stand still. Don't be afraid, stand still. Don't be afraid, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, tell the person, and see the salvation of the Lord. Which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. 
Sometimes you see some problems in your life and then you become angry at God. Sometimes you start seeing certain things, then now you are confused. Now you are like, oh my God. You see, I should have stayed in Egypt. I should have done that. I should have gone back. I should have continued to be a slave. I should have said, I should have said yes to that guy. In the women's area, they can say, maybe you were, you were very spirit filled and the guy came and the guy just wanted to take advantage of you. And you saw that this guy wants to take advantage and you said no. And then after one week, the guy don't call you again. Then you say, oh, maybe I should have said yes. <laughs> That's what I said. That is not the will of God. Amen. Amen. So continue to hold on to yourself. Don't back out. Don't back out. And he says that, so he's telling them, see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. Today, the Lord will show it to you. Amen. And he said, you shall see them again, no more, forever. The Lord said, 14, he said, the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. God is going to fight for you. The reason why you're not going to see them again forever no more is because God is taking over the hand gloves and he's putting them on and he's going to fight for you. Amen. I love battles that are hand over to God. Do you know, do you know how to hand over battles to God? When you start fighting about it and you leave it to God, it's a nice thing to watch. If you want to watch God fight, stop, stop complaining. Hand over the situation to God. Say, God, you know what? I don't care anymore about this thing. I leave it to you. Then God takes over the gloves and God will fight for you. God is going to fight for you. Tell somebody, God will fight for you. He will fight for you. And you will see him. Now, I'm bringing you to 15 because this is a very good thing. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they, they go forward. He says that after you've come to church, let me put it into our modern language. After you've come to church, you've prayed and you've heard the word of God. Start making efforts. Start making efforts. You see, this is where we lose. And this is where we fail. Especially where I'm coming from, like Africans. We prefer to stay in the church the whole day. And every seven days in the, seven days in the week. Yeah? Prayer, 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 prayer. Fasting, fasting, fasting. We don't make any efforts. I believe in prayer, action, and then God answer. That's what I believe. So, as a matter of fact, lazy people can now function around me. Because after we finish the prayer and the fasting, I want to see productivity. Yeah. After we finish the prayer and fasting, I want to see you putting some one or two things together. And then God will work with you. So, God told Moses, that, why are you still crying to my ears? That means, why are you still spending time praying after I've said, I am taking you to a promised land. Tell the children of Israel, move towards the sea. Make effort. We cannot pray for a wife. And any time you walk on the street, you close your eyes. No, no, you pray for a wife. So you pray for a wife, you dress neat, you dress good. Make sure your mouth is smelling well. <laughs> Lucia. You know, so that when you meet the woman, she can at least enjoy talking to you to start with. Not then, what, what is your name? My name Pooh. You know I don't have a phone number. <laughs> so make effort. We want the business, we want to be successful. What are you learning every day that will help you to become successful? Prayer alone doesn't make you successful. Prayer opens doors for you. Fasting prepares you. Fasting cleanses you. So if, if, if all you need is prayer, you pray. And then pray that God should give you sense to put a plan in your life. To make steps, to make moves. That God give me favor. 
God, help me. On Monday, I'm going to go and see this company. Grant me favor. This is what we pray for. That you become successful. Amen? Amen. Yeah, we, we, so we need to plan. We have to have a strategy. We have to have, we have, to have a program. You see, God says that write your vision down. This is God. God said it. He said write your vision down. If you want to know successful people, they always have a plan. If you enter to a successful man's house, I went to Archbishop's office, and one day he told me that, do you, Apostle, do you understand all these pictures on the wall? Ah, I just saw buildings, big, big buildings. You know, school. Ah, I said, yeah. And he said, you know what? I want to be reminded every day I come here that these dreams must come to pass. So if you go to his office, even now, today, he have his dreams. And the ones he accomplished, he pulled them down. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we don't have a plan. We just wake up, we do everything. We have to have a plan. And then you pray, you pray, you pray. So Jesus, Jesus God, he said, write down the vision. Make it, as you are writing it, make it plain. Why? He said, so that the next person who might find it, if you fail, the next person can go with your plan. The reason why Africa is still poor and broke is because nobody is writing anything down. <laughs> so people have ideas, they die with it. Hmm? We could have had a cure for HIV a long time ago, but the one who got it couldn't write it down. So when they killed him, he died. He died with the idea. And see, people are dying. So God said, write down the vision, make it plain, so that he that CF is, can run with it. So that means it's a race. God gives me a vision. I'm supposed to run with this thing. As I'm going, if my time comes that I have to die, I have to go to heaven, somebody can take over the baton and continue. But we are the only generation that when the man is not there, it's finished. I was telling somebody that oh, I want to travel small. I want to travel small, go and preach in other churches and you know, enjoy the atmosphere. And then even the person doesn't even come to church here. The person says, Apostle, you know that if you travel, the church is finished. <laughs> she doesn't even come to church here. But she has already analyzed the whole situation that who is going to keep us? You know, I'm, I'm contemplating when I come into church. And when I look at you, I feel like coming to church because you give me the word and things. But when you go, who is going to handle it? So, what happens? That means the people around me don't have the vision. Maybe I've, I've not written it down. I haven't made it clear for them to also fall in love with the vision, to run with it. Amen? So, that was by the way. So God told Moses, Moses, command your people to stop wasting time and to make efforts. I pray that this coming week you will make efforts. This coming week you will go to places. Amen. You will set up meetings. You will call some big people and you will tell them your God is big and you want to have 15 minutes with him. You want to tell him something that will inspire his life. And they will set up their appointment. Now when God told them, go forward, move forward, and then this is what happened. But, uh, so what? but lift, uh, uh, lift thou up thy rod and stretch it out. Stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. He said, but you the leader, give the people access. Direct them. Lift up your rod. Rod is for direction. The rod. A shepherd has a rod. And the rod, the reason why the rod has an angle like this is that when the sheep is going astray, the shepherd takes the bottom part of the rod and hook the sheep's neck and bring him into the right line. So Moses used the rod to direct my people to where they are supposed to go. Amen? Amen. But if you don't have a Moses, the sea will never be divided. No. So he didn't say that the people will divide the sea. Say, you Moses, you stretch your hand, and as you do that with the rod, the sea will be divided. And then the people who will obey the instruction will walk on dry ground. 
The reason why this generation is failing is because they don't have fathers. People don't want to be fathered. Are you gonna say? They, they, they don't they don't see you know men of God as fathers. Somebody who can they should lead them. Everybody who is just doing what they feel like. And that's why a lot of believers, people are confused and they are crushed. But I say you lift up the rod and then the sea will be divided. And then when you do that, the children of Israel who are with you will go on dry ground. I pray that may the sea be split up for your sake. May the sea be split up for your sake. Jesus name. And then he says that you, there's another thing here. Going on dry ground means that you will not struggle. I've been walking mad before. In Sweden, there, I'm sorry to say there's no mud here. Everywhere they have the coal tar and the cemented and everything. So in Sweden, you walk, you're even very soon they will make it so easy that your feet will not touch the ground. <laughs> but where I'm coming from, there are some places that when it rains, no go area. No go area. <laughs> <laughs> if the ground is not dry, it's very difficult. When your leg goes in the mud, the sum of the mud is just up to here. So it might take one step. But then to move that leg to take the second step is difficult. So God made it clear to most that as they listen to you, the ground that they will walk on, it will be dry. That means it will be solid and it will not make them weak. Because the journey ahead of you is long. Amen. Amen. Where God is taking you, he knows. He knows the strength you need. He knows he knows what it will take for you to get there. So I pray today that may God make it easy for you. Amen. That you will not walk through the mud. But may God make the ground dry so that you can have speed to move on. Amen. And he says here in verse 17, and, uh, he said, and I, behold, I will harden the heart of, uh, of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon upon his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen God is going to get himself honor are you getting what I'm saying? He said, I just want honor. So you've gone through a lot of problems, but God said, I'm going to get honor out of what you are going through. So God is the one hardening their hearts. Sometimes we say, God, why, why are things still happening? God is the one also behind it. He's permitting it. He's permitting it because he wants you to move forward. Tell somebody, God wants you to move forward. He wants you to move forward. Verse 19, verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel removed and removed and went behind them, and the uh, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. That means divine protection and divine separation. The angel, the children of Israel, they are seeing the, the, the thing as a pillar, but it's an angel. Are you getting me? The thing was before in front of them. But since they have agreed with their leader Moses, who is leading them, the angel said, then I'm not needed in the front, I'm needed at the back. <laughs> oh, you didn't get that one. You see, when you have a leader who is leading, then they say, Oh, then let me go and protect you from your back. Because Pharaoh is coming with his troops and they want to kill you. But since now you have agreed with your leader, let me go and protect you at your back. I pray. You understand? So the angel moved to the back and now there's divine separation. What your, your, you cannot do when Pharaoh comes, the angel of the Lord will do it for you. Amen. And then it says here, and stood behind them. 20. And it came to, it came to pass. And it came, uh, and it came between the camp of, of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them look at the thing here to them but it gave light by night to this 
so that the one so that so that the one came not near the other all the night. So see the same thing is happening here. Your enemies will see darkness, but you you will see light. Amen. So the same angel is, is facing this people from coming to hurt the Egyptian uh, the children of Israel. They are seeing darkness. But the children of Israel, it's a light to them. Light so that they can travel. Anyone that is after you, may they see darkness. Amen. The demons that are after you, may they see darkness. Amen. But may you see light. Amen. And it says that he kept them through the whole night. So when you are sleeping, let light cover you. Amen. And any spirit from anywhere that wants to worry you, let them see darkness. Amen. 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 Are you getting the revelation over him? Yeah. You will be covered with the light of God. And it will keep you the whole night. And 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back. I pray that any limitation move back. I prophesy that any limitation move back. Amen. Every limitation move back. Amen. Some of you, God has given you some instruction. And as you do them, May everything that has hindered you move backwards. Amen. Because God said, Moses, when you stretch your hand, the sea will be divided. But then when Moses did what God said, God said, I am myself. I am pushing the sea back for your sake. May God do it because you obey him. Amen. Whatever God is telling you to do, do it and you will see him. And then he said, it went backwards. Thank you, Jesus. It went back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry the sea dry land and the waters were divided now what i want to talk about is that i pray that the strong east wind of god will blow over your house mm -hmm. it will blow over your business it will blow about what whatever you are planning to do God said, I will cause the wind from the east to blow. And when that wind blow, anything that is wet will dry. Amen. My God. I pray that anything that is in your life that needs to dry up, let it dry up in Jesus' name. Amen. So he said, I will cause a strong wind. By a strong wind, all that night, I will let it blow through the night. Whilst you are sleeping, God will be working. Whilst you are sleeping, God will be working. And he will release a strong wind. And the wind will blow on the divided parts of the sea. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. And the water were, the water were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. I pray that the things that have hindered you now let them shift to the side Amen. so that you can come through. Amen. May God make a way for you. Amen. Even in the midst of the sea, let there be a way. May God make a way for you. Even in the midst of the forest, may God make a way for Amen. you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are about to we are about to stand up and pray. Now he says at 23. And the Egyptian pursued them, pursued them and went after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. We, we stand on our feet, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. That may God stand for his people may god protect his people may god deliver his people we are praying that you are not taking this journey by yourself there's a journey that you have to take and you don't want to take it by yourself we are praying that right now may god become a pillar of fire for you a crown of his glory over you that whatever you must do you will do it Lift up your voice and begin to pray that Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord become a pillar of fire 
and become a cloud over me and my children, my family, my church, my ministry, my calling, my journey in life, my purpose in life. Help me, Lord, that I'll be able to make it. Help me, Lord, that I'll be able to move on. Help me, Lord, that I'll be able to journey. Help me, Lord, that this thing that you've said will also come to pass. Help me, Lord. 30. This the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. I pray that the spirits that are controlling Mamo, the spirit that is controlling Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Europe, we are praying that we will see them dead at the shore. We will see them dead at the shore. In non-productive, they cannot do anything anymore. The spirit that is hindering you from getting your papers, the spirit that is delaying you from getting married here, the spirit that is frustrating you, that your business, you don't even know how to start it, those spirits, let them die at the shore. You will see it with your eyes. Because anything you will decide to do on Monday, starting from Monday, uh, God said, don't say Monday, starting from today. I hear you, sir. Starting from today. He said, some of you, when you go home, you are going to make phone calls. You will see that those spirits have died. And doors will be open unto you. Amen. Doors will be open unto you. Amen. Our last verse, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. And, and Israel saw, saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. I pray that what I'm saying today, when it comes to pass, you will fear God. Amen. Every good thing that is going to happen now will cause you to fear God. Amen. And then another thing that is going to happen now, that now when you fear God, you will believe God. Amen. You will believe God. When God blesses you, it's easy to believe Him. And then the third thing that will happen is, now you will believe the man of God He used. Yes, you will believe the man of God. And His servant, Moses, and his servant, Apostle Kobe Washington. Now, when, when you are coming to church, your heart will be different. Your heart will change. The way you receive the word will change. The way you see me will change. Because I declare these words upon you. Pray your last prayer. That Lord, do these things so that I can fear you, believe you, and I can believe that the man who is talking is a true man of God. He's a true servant of God. Pray your last prayer. Begin to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do this, Lord. That your people will know that you are in this house. Do this, Lord. That your people will fear you and believe you. Do this, Lord. That your people will know that, yes, you have chosen me to be your servant and over them, to lead them to the promised land. I pray and I give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is your first time in this church, so we bless you. Father, we pray for your people, Jesus Christ. You say nobody can come unto you unless the Father draws them. So you draw them to this place. We pray that you will plant them. We pray that you will keep them. You will anoint them. Let no spirits pull them away from this place. But I pray that, Lord Jesus, you will sustain them, let them grow. As he said, that he wants to know more about you, Jesus Christ. So today, he's giving you access into his life. That, Lord, come and invade his life. So that you can do what only you can do. Bless them, Lord. And help them. Heal them and deliver them from the powers of darkness. And I pray that let your glory now be seen over their life. In Jesus' your mighty name. Amen. You want to accept Jesus today? You want to accept Jesus today? Video to emote accept Jesus in the Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Yeah. Say, say, you ask a Jesus. Jesus, Tom, it leave. We are celebrating with our sister Cindy and our brother Alex. They are having their wedding here. 
Um, unfortunately, they couldn't make it today, but they'll be here next week for their wedding. They are preparing. And also, our sister Nancy is also having her Thanksgiving next week. So, we're encouraging everybody to invite people to come so we can celebrate with them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so if you want to get married and you need to have somebody, then bring them. We'll add all of you to it.